going to show you how to derive the equation for the electric potential of a disk a certain distance away from the axial line of the disk right in the previous video I've shown how to derive the equation for the ring electric potential of a ring the ring is actually very simple to find the potential of since all points of the ring are equidistant from a certain point X and with electric potential I don't even need to worry about direction every single element of the ring creates a potential there dV is equal to k dQ over R where R is the distance from each element here R okay and therefore it's equal to k dQ over x squared plus r squared to the one-half power and since it's all equidistant when I integrate it I don't have to integrate any of the of these things they're all constants so the potential of a ring comes out to equal kq over x squared plus r squared to the one-half power so pretty straightforward now let's take that and then find out the electric potential of a disk right so I'll do very similar to what I did with the electric field of a disk. I'll assume that the disk is made up of a bunch of rings. And then you have dV is equal to K. And then each ring has a charge dQ. And then the radius R of the ring, I'll call little r, r squared to the one-half power. So now let's see how we will proceed from here. Okay, so I will say uh, dQ is equal to sigma dA. And then, of course, you're going to say dA is equal to 2 pi r dr. Okay, and if the uh, disk is uniform charge density, when I integrate this, uh, the surface charge density comes out of the integral then the potential of a plate comes out to be 2 pi k sigma 2 pi k sigma integral r dr over x squared plus r squared to the one half power 0 to r then I do my u substitution again u is equal to x squared plus r squared du is equal to 2 r dr and you will go through similar the plate will equal 2 pi k sigma du divided by 2 over u to the 1 half and then if I focus on the integral again which will be 1 half integral u to the minus half du <coughs> and then the integral of that is going to be 1 half and then you add 1 so you'll get u to the half over half and then the 2's cancel and so the inter integral comes out to be x squared plus r squared to the one-half from 0 to r from 0 to r again remember that you're putting the r into the little r not the x okay so the v of the plate comes out to be 2 pi k sigma and then if you put the r there you're going to have x squared plus r squared to the one-half minus you put the zero there, you're just going to have x, okay? So the potential of a plate has this behavior, 2 pi k sigma. If I want to, I could also put sigma is q over pi r squared, and then I'll have an expression in terms of the radius, and then you have this x squared plus r squared, 1 half minus x. Now, one of the things you could do here is you could check to see if your answer is right by doing what? Remember, the, what's the relationship between electric field and potential? Electric field is negative the gradient of potential, right? E is equal to negative gradient of potential. Now, in this case, what do we mean by the gradient? Well, we're basically taking the derivative of the potential with respect to all the variables that the potential depends on. In this case, the potential only depends on the variable x. So we're basically saying, electric field is negative dv dx i hat if the potential also depended on y and uh, z we would have done negative dv dy j hat negative dv dz k hat 
And then we would have called these partial derivatives, right? It would be a partial uh, derivative. So in this case, we don't have these. So the electric field is going to be, if you take the derivative of that, 2 pi k sigma, what's the derivative of this? The 1 half comes down. The derivative of this is uh, x squared plus r squared to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2, uh, 2x, minus the derivative of this is 1. So we're taking the derivative of it with respect to x. 2 pi k sigma, 1 minus the 2 and the 2 cancel, x over x squared plus r squared to the 1 half power. Notice that that is the answer that we got for the electric field of a uniform plate, 2 pi k sigma 1 minus x over x squared plus r squared. So the potential integral is a little easier to do, maybe a little quicker. And then once you take the, its negative of its derivative, you get the electric field and it comes out to be true. Okay? So it works out. Now we could check to see if the other one works out. What if the surface charge density is kappa r squared? Will that one work out? Let's derive the, uh, the equation for the potential of that and let's see what happens, okay? So what will be different here? Well, you will have similar to the other one, you will have two pi k, instead of sigma, you will have kappa, and then you will have an extra r squared here, right? An extra r squared. Substitution, let u equal x squared plus r squared, uh, u minus x squared is equal to r squared, du is equal to uh, 2r dr. So you have that same idea, v of the plate. This is now non-uniform charge density where sigma is kappa r squared. So you have 2 pi k kappa, and then you have here r squared is equal to u minus x squared, r dr is du divided by 2 over u to the 1 half power, integral of that. And then this 2 goes over and gets rid of this 2. So it's going to be very similar, except uh, in the case of the electric field, I had u to the 3 halves, right? So now you have here pi k kappa, and then you have integral u over u to the 1 half, that's equal to u to the 1 half minus x squared and over u to the 1 half is u to the minus 1 half du, okay? So then, so you have pi k kappa, the integral of this one is u to the 3 halves over 3 halves minus x squared, and then the integral of this one is u to the 1 half over 1 half, right? And then uh, we take the 2 and then put it up to the top again, so we have 2 pi k kappa, and then we have, now we could put down what the u was, x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power over 3, okay? And then we have here minus x squared, x squared plus r squared to the one half. Now we go from zero to r, okay? So basically uh, it was a similar u type of substitution. Then when you do that, you put in the r again. So the potential of the plate is two pi k kappa. Then you substitute the r into the little r, x squared plus big R squared over 3 halves over 3 minus x squared x squared plus R squared to the 1 half then you put the 0 in there minus then you put in 0 here and you get the 0 for the R squared so you have x squared to the 3 halves it'll give you um, x squared to the 3 halves that'll give you x cubed x cubed over 3 then you put in zero for the little r, and then what you get from there. And then you have uh, minus minus, so it'll be turned into a plus, right? 
because we're doing minus this or this and then minus minus you'll go plus and then you'll have x squared and then you put in zero here and you have x squared square root which is just x okay so that means basically it's x cubed all right now what is this equal to x cubed minus x cubed over 3 that's equal to 2 thirds x cubed right so the final summary is 2 thirds x cubed Okay, then I could find out what kappa is, similar to what I did with the electric field, but the answer is going to be the same, right? So if you have uh, Q is equal to uh, integral sigma dA, which is gonna equal kappa R squared two pi R dr, and then that's gonna equal kappa two pi R to the fourth over four, and then kappa is going to equal 2q over pi r to the fourth. So we didn't even have to do that integral again if we already had done it for the electric field. So we could put that down here, 2q over pi r to the fourth, and then the final answer becomes four. The pi cancels, and then it just becomes basically four, K Q over R to the fourth. So this is the potential of a plate any distance away from the plate if the surface charge density increases as R squared. Now, if I take the minus derivative of that, what should I get? E equals minus dV dx I had you should get the same electric field equation that you got when you did the electric field integration. So this will stay the way it is for kq over r cubed. The derivative of this will be the three halves will come down, x squared plus r squared to the one half times two x over three. Okay, and then the derivative of this one minus It'll be uh, x squared times the derivative of that, half x squared plus r squared to the negative one half times two x. So basically here you're using the product rule. And minus the derivative of this, which is two x times that, x squared plus r squared to the one half, minus the derivative of this, which is the three comes down, so two x squared, okay? <coughs> over r cubed this one will cancel this one so you'll have uh, and then the 2 will cancel this 2 so you just have basically x times x squared plus r squared to the 1 half and then this one the 2 and the 2 cancel so you'll have minus x times x squared which is x cubed over x squared plus r squared to the 1 half and then this one you have minus 2x x squared plus r squared to the one half which is this one minus 2x squared now x x squared plus r squared to the one half minus 2x x squared plus r squared to the one half they combine right so you basically have it's like saying x minus 2x so you basically have negative x right so this one becomes negative x and then you have negative 2x squared, okay? Now remember the electric field was negative the derivative. So all we did here is take the derivative. So I need an extra negative, an extra negative, which is gonna distribute in there, cancel, and you'll have uh, x, x cubed, uh, then you have x squared. Now, if I factor out one of the x's, factor this out, make this x squared, factor this out, and then you write it like this, there you have it. That was the uh, result that we got when we did the electric field integral. 4k q x over r cubed, x squared plus r squared one half, plus x squared over x squared plus r squared one half, plus two x, and that was our result, okay? So now you can see 
how to do both the electric field integral, the potential integral, and how to take the derivative of the potential to derive the electric field. Okay? Thank you very much.